Hey fellow tennis nerds, welcome to another racket brand video. This time I want to talk about Dunlop rackets. Dunlop, they made it pretty easy. Uh, they have the FX line for force, power. That's a pure drive style frame. They have this SX line for spin with grommets creating spin movement, more aerodynamic shape. And you have the CX line for control, the more control oriented, thinner beam, lower power. And we'll go through all the different uh, Dunlop rackets. I think they've made uh, a huge improvement over the last couple of years, uh, made their lineup clearer, uh, they've made it feel better. I'm a big fan of the CX line uh, where they have a few interesting models. But uh, let's go through the different Dunlop frames. If you have any questions, you put them in the comments below. And if you need more help finding a tennis racket, you check out the consultation service at tennisnerd.net slash shop. And if you want to get more content and support Tennis Nerd, you become a patron at patreon.com slash tennis nerd. Let's start with control, the CX line, the control rackets. They have a bunch of different options here. Uh, that's where kind of the gray areas of tennis rackets come into play, because if you have three lines, then you can offer a bunch of different models kind of bridging in between the different lines. Head has more lines and, and more rackets, but this is another approach to do it, which is done also by Yonex, Babula and Dunlop. So the control rackets are the lowest power CX200 Tour 1820 up to an CX400, which is more of a tweener frame, lighter, more power. There's also a CX400 Tour, which was new and I reviewed favorably. I really like this racket, kind of like a more control oriented tweener. They also have an oversize edition, uh, which is more controlled. And the usual way to tell a control racket is that it has a lower stiffness rating, thinner beam, tighter string pattern. These are the key factors for a control oriented racket. My favorite of the bunch is the CX200 Tour 1820. I thought the new version was refined in feel, even better than the previous one, which I used as a racket of choice for a while. Really love that frame. There's also a 1619 if you want a bit more free spin, but I prefer the 1820 personally. The CX200 is a little bit more forgiving, a little bit more like a blade, uh, with a bit more headlight balance than a blade. Uh, also a nice frame, uh, plush, low stiffness. Then you get the CX400 Tour, which is a step up in power, a step up in stiffness, but I wouldn't say it's a harsh frame, just uh, more power and easier access to spin with a 1619 pattern and a 100 square inch hitting surface. Uh, and then also an oversize, if we, this is the largest head size, lightweight. If you look at the specs, you can see that it's um, 105 square inches here and the 21.5 millimeter beam. And this is where the control it comes in. Like it's a lower power with this thinner beam and lower stiffness than you would you see from the FX line, which is the force equals power line and the SX line, which is the spin line. We'll get to that. So the CX line, control oriented rackets, uh, really nice rackets, really like this line of, of frames uh, and uh, could easily take one into a tournament, especially the CX200 Tour. So I do like the control line from Dunlop, it's my favorite line from them, but it also suits my style. So the spin series has a different beam profile, a more aerodynamic, more similar to an aero style racket from Babolat. Uh, has these kind of indents in the frame as well, uh, where you're supposed to reduce wind drag. They have spin boost grommets, so more open grommets for more string movement, which will help spin potential. Thicker beam to generate more power. These frames are stiffer, although not ultra stiff. Uh, they're somewhat decent in stiffness. And you can see here from the Tour version, 310 grams and uh, somewhat thick beam in the middle, but then the 23 is similar to more of a head speed uh, in the beam width. 64 stiffness, not bad, um, actually, for a, a racket of this kind. Not sure, it felt a little bit stiffer to me, but uh, I, I didn't think that was... Um, it's not harsh, but it felt a little bit stiffer than 64. You have to always take the stiffness ratings with a um, pinch of salt. And the spin boost grommets I talked about to increase movement. They have Sonic Core made with Infinity. You can check out all their tech. Uh, as you know, tech is, is mainly marketing lingo to describe a pretty standard feature of the racket, but in this case they claim that power grid string tech creates a 30% larger sweet spot. 
Not sure how that works, to be honest. Uh, but they are a nice racket. And what stands out with these, the SX, the Dunlop spin rackets, is that they are tighter in the string bed than most spin-oriented rackets, which helps control also on flatter shots. But these are definitely more spin-oriented with the more aerodynamic throat design. Uh, there's a 300, which is kind of the standard aero version. Gets down to lighter weight. You can also get a, like a 600, which is slightly extended, very light, like 270 grams unstrung. Um, so there's a bunch of different options here, uh, depending on what kind of weight and uh, level you are. Uh, oversized and lightweight rackets uh, are generally for players with shorter swings that that need help with power and and spin. And uh, but not harsh. I, I have a, a friend that that I gave my uh, CX600 to and, and he's really loving it and he's a decent player. So um, there are players you can definitely play with lighter racket than you think at times. You just have to try them and if you feel that they're too light, you can always customize them a little bit. Now it's time to look at the Force line. The Force is all about power, uh, more like a pure drive. It's funny that they have uh, chosen the colors of the rackets to be similar uh, over certain brands. Like you have blue for power, yellow for spin. You just look at Babolat, just uh, look at head uh, and red for control. And uh, those three brands all do that the same way. Probably have more brands to do that. So blue is, is apparently power, yellow is spin and red is control. Talking about prestige, for example, for from head. Um, so these power frames are stiffer. Uh, I really like the FX500, but I did notice a, a slight issue with the stiffness. This one felt great, had a, a more controlled string bed than most tweener frames, and it was a frame I could have switched to because of its ease of views and playability, but my tender elbow and sensitive elbow didn't like it as much as the rest of me. Uh, so a very nice frame, but but obviously with these power frames for from any brand, you have to consider the stiffness. Uh, but they explain it here that it's a wider throat design, which is different. If you look at the throat, it has uh, almost like a, a burn style thing there from Wilson. And uh, that's supposed to give it a more balanced feel. I'm not sure what that means to be 100%, but I really like the feel and performance of these power rackets. Uh, the Tour one, I didn't like as much. It's a 98 square inch version. I felt stiffer than the 500. I prefer the 100 square inch, which is rarely the case for me. Uh, the FX500 was, was almost like a perfect power frame for me. Uh, really easy to use. Same beam width as the Spin series, but without the Spin technology. It's a slightly different throat design and so on. This is a standard tweener, but with a slightly tighter string pattern in the center for a bit more control, and that's why... Uh, my flat shots like this one but the stiffness is a little bit concerning for me might not be for you uh, just putting it out there always consider your your health your arm health and so on when you pick a racket and they have light rackets uh, for more game improvement style when you get a little bit of extra length you get a little bit more more stiffness in some of these uh, if you look at the fx 700 for example which is the most powerful one uh, has a 107 square inch head size, so it's very oversized, so you have a huge sweet spot, but not that easy to control. Longer length uh, to uh, have a decent swing weight of this frame. Very light, 265 grams on strong. Really thick beam in the middle there, 27 millimeters. And a pretty high stiffness, 70 RA. So these frames from Dunlop makes a lot of sense. They've made it easy. For more control, a bit softer feel, you go with the control line. For more spin, you go with the SX line. It's all about spin focus. And for the power hungry that hit maybe a little bit flatter, you go for the power rackets, the FX line. All pretty good rackets. I've been, been positively surprised by Dunlop rackets over the last two years since they, they joined with with Srixon. Uh, it's, it's been pretty good quality rackets, especially the CX line. And I, I do like that they've made it easy to understand what type and series of rackets is for what player. I think Bobolat could learn in a way also that they do have a control line where Bobolat has the strike line, which is not so much controlled, still very powerful. They have the kind of necessary lines to appeal to a wide range of players. And I think that's very smart.
the CX200 Tour and the CX400 Tour are my favorites. Like the FX500, but just felt a little bit stiff. The spin rackets are not really for me, but I, I have a few friends that actually like these rackets a lot. I hope you found this video useful and there's a brief look at their frames. That's all for this one, guys. Have a nice day. Thanks for watching and don't forget to play some tennis.